So this morning we're gonna do a little bit of flow and restore. So what is that? Many of you may or may not know. So the flow part is obvious. We're gonna move and breathe and get used to the anchoring into just where you are right here in the moment. Um, just a little bit of yoga to get the blood flowing. And then the restore part is what really drives me the most. The restore part is setting up yoga poses with whatever you have. So now that you're in your house, I hope you have blankets and pillows, uh, maybe a bathrobe strap. Um, typically we use bolsters, which <clears throat> since I'm doing this for a living now, I have all the props. So I'm guessing you don't have one of these and that's just fine. You don't need to have bolsters or invest in anything. If you've got couch cushions, bed pillows, or any other type of pillow, you can make this work. So grab yourself a couple of pillows from the couch, hopefully two the same size, or two from your bedroom, just so you can have them handy for later on. Go grab a bunch of bath towels so they're all the same size, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll them up into a nice big rolled bolster. And we'll probably also be opening them up a little bit and using them from their rectangle shape as well. So hopefully you have all those things. Um, I'm not going to worry about blocks this morning. We can use small pillows for blocks and we'll use the big pillows for bolsters. And then the only other thing I grabbed was my bathrobe strap because most people do not have yoga straps laying around their house. And this would be great. Good morning, Perry and Christine. Miss you guys. Um, the straps are great because they have the buckle and you can adjust them, but again, no worries. We are going to make do with what we have. So grab a bathroom strap and we'll be using that at some point just to secure our legs to the blankets or the bolsters or the pillows, whatever we have. So I'll be interchanging these words here and there, um, but I'll be as clear as I can be to get you set up and as comfortable as you can. So back to why the restorative piece is important. The restorative yoga is teaching you basically how to just calm your central nervous system to find some deep healing from inside out. Anybody can do it. It doesn't matter what shape you're in physically, mentally, or emotionally. It's healing from the inside out. And in this day and age, we can all use a little bit of that. So it'll bring some deep relaxation. It might be a little strange doing this online because there is some periods of silence, um, but I'll be watching. And good morning, Miss Tempe. I'll be watching and you know, we'll do the best we can. So we're gonna start out this morning with some flow, just some simple stretching and movement to bring on uh, some internal heat. And then maybe like the last half, last 20 minutes of class. Yay, Pat Sweetland, happy to see you on. Uh, the last 20 minutes of class, we're gonna do some restorative, only a couple of poses just enough to give you a taste of, of what it is. Um, I'm hoping you have a nice quiet space to be working in this morning. Um, grab your coffee if you want, it's all good. We're just gonna take it one breath at a time, right? So we've got another five minutes before we actually start. For those of you that are not um, interested in the flow piece, I hope you stay with us and just continue to breathe with us. You can sit in a chair or sit on some pillows um, and still do the upper body work if you're not interested in doing the full flow. It's fine. Again, we're just going to go with it and make it what it is and be creative. And the big thing is, is to breathe. So all that nice deep inhaling and deep exhaling, that'll be enough to get you going this morning. And like I said, I'm really excited for the restorative piece. I was going to snag Michael uh, out of the bedroom and make him be my model for the restorative because he loves that part, but uh, he's dog sitting and of course enjoying his coffee while watching TV. So I guess everybody has their priorities this morning. Um, but you never know, he might surprise us the next time I'm on. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. In the meantime, while we're waiting to get started, if you have blankets handy or pillows, I would love for you to set yourself up in a restorative opening pose this morning. So you can go to your mat, take a pillow. And if it's really big like this one, you can squish it in half. And as you squish it in half, you're going to place this underneath one knee. Take your other pillow, squish it in half. 
put the soft part under your knee. Bring the soles of your feet together and then nice and slow lie down. That's it. It's a hip opener. But your knees are supported and you'll be able to let your front body start to open. So go ahead, stuff the pillows under your knees. They'll be at a nice little bit of an angle. Soles of your feet together. And then as you lay down, open up your arms. Palms can stay open. And we're just gonna start there nice and quiet. So come into your breath. There will be points where I'll do things, but mostly I'm gonna try to just talk you through what we're doing this morning, okay? So just be patient with yourself, with me, with the situation, and keep coming back to your breath. So take a full inhale and a full exhale. And just anchor in again to the sounds around you, whether that's me or maybe when you get quiet, you can hear the birds chirping through the window. It's a beautiful reminder of spring and renewal And hopefully some restorative yoga will tie into that beautifully. So good morning, officially. It's nine o'clock on a Friday. We've made it through a week. And a big part of that is you and your patience. Even when you think you're not being patient. So take a full inhale, fill up through the chest. Pause at the top, take a nice slow exhale back out, draw the navel closer to your spine as you exhale all of that breath. Come back in for another inhale, nice slow steady exhale. We're just going to keep cycling through those breaths this morning. Filling up and then letting go. And perhaps you start to notice how physically that's feeling. Maybe there's a little bit of a grounding happening. If you are on your backs with your feet together and your knees open for Supta Baddha Konasana, allow the weight of your body, the gravity to just be against the floor. You have the pillows under your knees for support. And then you can come back to your breath. So take another full inhale and a slow exhale. It's okay to keep your eyes closed. You can keep anchoring into your breath. And whenever I start to speak again, I promise I'm not going anywhere for the next hour. Take another full breath in. And a full breath out. If you are on your backs in Sukta Baddha Konasana, <clears throat> with your next breath, bring your hands to the outsides of your knees. Close them up like a book, ground your feet, and let your knees knock in. You can push the pillows to the sides, get them out of your way, and then everybody can come to sit nice and tall, sitting bones grounding onto your mat. Legs are crossed. Take a full breath in, sweep your arms up, find some length through your spine, let the shoulders go up, maybe look up, and then bring your hands right into your heart space. 
we're just going to bring some movement into our upper body. So inhaling again, lift the arms up, and then exhale, bring them down. Sweep up again, palms open, inhaling, lift up nice and high. Exhale, hands back down through center. This time we're going to add in a twist. So inhaling, breathe in deep, reach up. And then we're going to twist to the right. Take a full breath in, getting nice and tall. And a full breath out to ground down through your sit bones. Inhale, come back to center, sweep the arms up. Exhale, go the other way. Again, breathing in deep for length, and then exhaling fully for grounding. Inhale, come back up. Bring your hands right back into your heart space. Take a full breath in, and a full breath out. If this is all you do for the next few minutes while we're together, that's all you need to do. Keep breathing deeply and fully. So take another deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Start to turn yourselves around. We'll come into hands and knees. So stack your knees right underneath your hips. Wrists go underneath the shoulders. And you literally turn yourself right into a table. So listening to my voice instead of watching, take a full breath in, release the belly, tip the tail, open up across the heart. And then exhale, round the spine, tuck the tail, let the head go down in between the biceps. And you're literally just breathing into your spine to create some length, to create some space, to create a little bit of movement. But keep coupling back to your inhales and your exhales. This will help keep your mind focused right where you are instead of worrying about what's going on around you. And we're not gonna talk about anything other than breath this morning and some patience. So now take another full breath in <clears throat> and a full breath out. And if you're still moving your spine up and down, creating some flexion and extension, maybe you pause back in tabletop and then look down the right side of your body, stretching out your ribs. So you look down the side of your body towards your ankle and then you take it the other way and you look the other way and you just bring movement and space into your side bodies, your ribs, all those intercostal muscles. I don't know about you, but I've been sitting on a couch a lot, and sometimes that rounding just doesn't feel very good after a while. You just wanna stretch, so keep using this, cows and cats, to open up the heart, open up the chest, open up the back body, breathing as deeply as you can. And then pausing back in your tabletop, take your feet out long behind you and come into a plank. And if you're not a fan of plank, take your knees down. You're still getting the same upper body workout. Stay strong through your hands, pressing down through all 10 fingers, and then as you're in your plank, knees down or up, it doesn't matter, but feel that lift come up through the low belly, looking to keep your hips on the same level as your shoulders. Take a full breath in and then exhale your hips high. Come on into your first downward facing dog of the morning. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. From your down dog, lift up onto your toes. Take a full breath in, come up to your toes, glide forward into plank. And you know, we, we talk about these poses all the time and, Sometimes it sounds like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing here, but sometimes we don't. So pay attention to just what's happening, spreading all 10 fingers nice and wide, lifting up the hips, keeping them level with the shoulders, pushing the earth away. Stay strong in your plank and with your next breath, lift your hips up high, downward facing dog. Your head stays right between your biceps. You're staying strong through your hands. Take another full breath in, lift up to your toes, glide forward back into plank. Pause and breathe in your plank. Staying high on your toes, heels stacked above them, hips in line with the shoulders, and again, knees can be up or down. So pay attention to what your body's saying to you this morning. And then from here, we're gonna lower down. So bend your elbows in close to your side bodies, lower all the way to the mat. When you're flat on the mat, untuck your toes. Push down through the tops of your feet and draw your shoulders back. This is a little small back bend, nothing extreme. It's just a little bit of a lift to let your heart shine forward, the head follows. Exhale, release, lower down. We're gonna take three more cobras. So really push down through the tops of your feet, feel that energy come right up through the crown of your head as you lift up and you lower. Keep your elbows tucked in close to your side bodies. Take another inhaling, lifting up and then lowering. 
and then tuck your toes, push back up to your knees or full plank, pause and breathe, shift your hips back up, downward facing dog. And when you're in down dog, pay attention to what's happening. Paddle out your feet, maybe bend both knees, bring your shins parallel to the mat, and then with a beautiful inhale, straighten the legs, pressing the thigh bones to the back of the wall and shift your hips back up. And you're in this gorgeous upside down V. And we take for granted the effects of gravity. So pause here and just breathe and be in this pose. It's not gonna last forever. Just like whatever's happening right now is not gonna last forever. We're being patient and we're learning to breathe, coming back into the breath, anchoring into where you are. So inhale again up to your toes. This time look forward, take as many steps as you want to bring your feet up right between your hands. You're in a forward fold. Take a full breath in as you lift halfway and then exhale, release forward fold. Inhale, rise to stand, sweep all the way up, bringing the hands up like we did in the beginning. Bring your hands back to your heart space and pause. Draw your shoulders back, pull in through the low belly. Take a full breath in, lift the arms up. Exhale, forward fold at the waist, hinging all the way down, hands come to the earth. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, keep your hands down, take your feet back out to plank. Pause in your plank and then decide if you're gonna lower all the way down or shift your hips back up for down dog. If you lower all the way down, untuck your toes, really ground through the tops of your feet and then inhale for cobra or up dog. Lower down and then move your way back into downward facing dog. So everybody come to their knees for just a moment. When we go through these practices, there's a child's pose that nobody ever wants to take. Well, guess what? You're in your house now, nobody's watching. If you wanted to stay in child's pose for the rest of this and just listen to me talk you through, all I want you to do is inhale and exhale. But if you'd like a really nice child's pose to set yourself up in, you have all these props now, right? You've got your living room pillows, your bedroom pillows, whatever you need. So child's pose is this. You take your big toes to touch behind you and you take your knees nice and wide. If this bothers your knees, you're gonna take a blanket, bath towel, whatever you have, and just fold it <clears throat> so it's in like a little bit of a log and I want you to place that underneath your knees and then you can take pillows and stack them as much as you want and for your child's pose you're just gonna lay right over these pillows it sounds simple and it really is it's giving you an opportunity to just stay with your breath Okay, let's get back into it. You can stay with that child's pose if you want. You don't have to. Let's come back into downward facing dog. Take your feet out long behind you. <clears throat> Start in plank, put your wrists underneath your shoulders. Lift your hips up nice and high. Come back into your downward facing dog, your upside down V, and let gravity do its thing. Paddle out your feet and pause. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale up to your toes, look forward, walk step, or bring your feet up to in between your hands any way you'd like. Use your breath to take a halfway lift. You're drawing the crown of the head closer to your phone or your laptop. And then exhale forward fold, ground your hands. Take a full breath in, rise up to stand, reach up tall like you could touch the ceiling. And then bring your hands right back to your heart space. Pause, take a full breath in, and a full breath out. Just anchor in to where you are right here, right now. All four corners of each foot grounding down. Take a big breath in, lift the arms up, <clears throat> and then exhale forward fold again. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, place your hands down underneath your shoulders and take your feet back out to plank. You can stay right here in your plank and breathe and then shift your hips up for down dog or bend your elbows close to your side bodies, exhaling as you lower all the way down. Untuck the tops of your feet Really feel everything hug into your center line and breathe into your cobra or your up dog. And then exhale, let that go. Tuck your toes, push back up, downward facing dog. Remember, you can pedal out your feet whenever you want in down dog. <clears throat> you can skip all of this and go right back into a child's pose using your pillows and the props and the blankets that you have. This is designed to bring you some comfort and some relief and I'm sorry, sitting on a couch just, it doesn't do it. There has to be something else. 
So give yourself these moments to breathe and move and then pause and take care of you. Inhale, take a full breath in, come on up to your toes, look forward, walk, step or jump your feet right between your hands. Take a full breath in for a halfway lift and then exhale forward fold. Inhale, rise to stand, get nice and tall. And then on your exhale, sit your hips back and come into chair. So what does that mean, come into chair? Well, this is exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna sit your hips back <clears throat> like you're looking for that seat. Your arms are extended or they can come to your heart space. You pull into the low belly, tucking your tailbone. Most of you probably know what I'm talking about, but there might be one or two that doesn't. So you get to endure my explanations. Breathe into your chair. Notice what your shoulders are saying to you. Your hands can always come to your heart space. You could bend your elbows, drawing your shoulder blades together, opening up more across your heart. Wherever you are in this chair, you're breathing and this will not last forever. So take one more breath in and one more breath out. Forward fold over your legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Keep your hands down, walk your feet back out to plank. Pause in your plank and then use these connecting poses for your vinyasa to decide if you need the movement in the breath or if you need the stillness in the breath. You can stay in plank and then just shift your hips up nice and high for down dog or bend your elbows close to your side bodies. Take yourself all the way down to the mat. Push down to the tops of your feet, inhaling for cobra or up dog. For those of you that know what you're doing here, keep focused on your breath. Let that glide you and guide you as you move from pose to pose. Allow yourself to be filled with the breath and some patience and some grace. And then we'll all meet back in downward facing dog. Take another full breath in, open your mouth, sigh it all out. With your next breath, inhale up to your toes, exhale, look forward, walk, step or jump your feet right between your hands. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Big breath in as you rise to stand, sweep your arms up overhead. Follow it right back down, exhaling as you forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Keep your hands down, take your left foot to the back edge of the mat in a separate lane. <clears throat> so now you're in a low lunge. Keeping your left hand down, take a big breath in, sweep the right hand up, twist open. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Bring the hand back down, and then with your next breath, pulling in through the core, rise strong for crescent. So bring your arms up to frame your head. The right knee is stacked right over the ankle, and you're high on the toes of your left foot. Keep pressing that left thigh bone to the back of the room. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Be patient as your body gets used to this pose, holding yourself in this crescent lunge. Take one more breath in, exhale the hands down, either walk your feet into this opposite position or jump switch your feet. Take the left foot forward and the right foot back. <clears throat> Keeping the feet in separate lanes, be sure the left knee is bent over the ankle. And then keeping the right hand down, sweep the left hand up and twist open. Keep pressing that right thigh bone to the back of the room. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Bring the left hand down, finding your balance with your next inhale, rise up, both hands high, frame the head, crescent. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And as you ground into your feet, notice if your shoulders are speaking to you louder than normal. Maybe you need to drop your elbows, but keep lifting through the heart, drawing the shoulders to stay stacked over the hips. Take another full breath in, lifting the arms up, and then exhale, plant the hands, take the left foot back to meet the right, come back into your plank. Take a full breath in plank and a full breath out and stay right here. So we're gonna go into side plank. You can either take your right knee down underneath the hip and kickstand the foot off the mat or roll to the outside edge of your right foot. So strong poses require a little bit more breath. Take your time. If this is too much for you in full plank, take the knee down right under your hip. Sweep up and open. You've got that foot behind you like a kickstand. You can open up more and breathe deeper. Take a full breath in 
and a full breath out. And then roll back down onto your toes, both hands on the mat in full plank. You can rinse that off any way you'd like by lowering down or just shift your hips back up into downward facing dog. Are you breathing? Are you taking time to pause? And if maybe it's a little much, you can go back to child's pose. Be kind to yourself right now and just keep listening to your inhales and your exhales and let that be what guides you to where you need to be. We still have another side for side plank, so don't think I forgot or anything. Inhale up to your toes, glide forward back into plank and pause. And again, you choose. You can take the left knee down directly under your hip, kickstand the foot off, or roll to the outside of your left foot. Keep shifting the hips up, breathing in through the mid belly, stretching the hand up high, opening up and breathing. Take another full breath in here and a full breath out. And then roll back onto your toes, both hands down into plank, lift the hips up, downward facing dog. Take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale the right leg straight out behind you like you're gonna put your footprint on the back wall. Get long through the body and then with your breath, exhale, bring the foot forward, plant it right by your right thumb. You can use your hands to get it up there. Again, keeping your feet in two separate lanes, inhale high for crescent. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Take your left hand forward like you're shaking my hand and your right arm behind you, opening up and twisting. Flip open that left hand, sweep it up. If you fall out, if your balance is off, that's okay, be nice to yourself. Come on back in, hands go high to frame the head, bring the hands down to frame the foot and bring the left foot forward and take the right foot back. You can just walk that through or you can jump switch. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhaling, rise high for crescent on this side, hands go up, take a full breath in and a full breath out. That left knee stacked right over the left ankle. You're high on the right toes of your left foot. And now with breath, take your right arm forward and your left arm back, twisting open here. Open up the palm, sweep it up. Let the left fingertips glide down the back leg. And again, if you fall over, you fall over. It's not a big deal. Come on back nice and slow. Raise both hands up to frame the head. Take a full breath in, lift up. Exhale, plant the hands. Take the left foot back to meet the right. Pause in your plank. And again, this is where you decide, what do you need? You wanna build some more heat? Lower yourself down to the mat, breathing into cobra or up dog, or maybe you shift your hips right back into downward facing dog. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Pause and breathe. Sometimes this quiet, the stillness, it's the hardest part, right? Yeah, I'm not a fan. You know I'm pretty social. I like people, I like activity. I'm cooking way too much food because I'm eating it all. All right, take a nice deep breath in and a slow exhale out. Inhale the right leg straight out behind you again, finding length, pushing through the heel, and with your exhale, bring the foot forward, plant it by your thumb. Take a full breath in as you rise up for crescent again, get strong and tall, pull in through the low belly, and then with your next breath, Swivel that left foot down so the heel connects and you open up into warrior two. Get focused on whatever's in front of the middle finger of your right hand and breathe. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Flip the right hand, don't move your legs. Stay bent in that right knee and sweep up and then we're gonna exhale into side angle. So take the right elbow down to the right knee and let the left hand go up nice and high. <clears throat> Pause here, breathing deeply and allowing your body to do what it needs to do. And you know what that means? That means you're just looking for some opening. You're looking to be able to breathe into those nooks and crannies so that you can fill up, stay focused on your breath and let go and ground. So, Maybe this is getting a little tiring. If you wanna come out of it, come on back up into warrior two. If you're good where you are, you wanna take that left hand forward, palm down. You can take the right hand out like you're holding a beach ball. Then with your breath, now come back up. Everybody's back in warrior two. 
We'll pause here and breathe, grounding back into that right leg. The knee's bent right over the ankle and the knee tracks toward the pinky toe, so don't let the knee cave in. You want it stacked straight over that ankle. Take a full breath in, flip the right hand, stretch up, reach back, and then exhale, cartwheel the hands down, frame the foot, step the right foot back to meet the left, you're back in plank. Pause in your plank, lower down, knees up or down, skip it all together, go right back to downward facing dog. Your choices, your breath, this is it. You have the control over what you're doing right here and right now, and that's breathing. So be patient with yourself. Maybe you're warming up. Maybe this is tiring. It's all good. It's not going to last. So just keep breathing with me, taking a full inhale and a full exhale. Inhale the left leg straight up behind you from downward facing dog. Push through the heel and with your exhale, bring that left foot forward using your hands if necessary. Plant the foot right by the left thumb. Take a full breath in as you inhale through the core, lifting up through the fingers, pulling in that low belly, shoulders stacked over the hips. Take another breath in and another breath out. Now we're going to come into warrior two the other way. So swivel the right foot down, heel connects to the earth. You keep that left knee stacked over the left ankle. Arms are extended. Stay focused over that middle finger of your left hand. And then flip the hand. Reach it up. Don't come out of the legs. And then exhale. Come into side angle here. So the elbow rests lightly on the left thigh and that right hand reaches up. If your shoulder's talking to you, turn your hand around. Bring the hand behind you. Open up across the heart. Shine that heart up and forward. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And again, you can stay here. You don't have to do anything else except breathe and keep creating more openness through your body. If you want to take that left hand forward and bring the right hand around, you're still drawing that right shoulder back, staying open, pretending you're holding the beach ball. And then everybody, let's come back into warrior two. So palms down, shoulders release. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Flip that left hand, stretch it up, reach it back. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down, frame the foot. Step it back to meet the right. Pause in your plank. Take a full breath in plank. And then lower all the way down, rinsing it off. Or shooting right back into downward facing dog. You guys are doing good. Still see lots of names watching, but I hope you're actually participating. If you are watching, this is it. Just breathe, breathe with me. It's better than just sitting on the couch. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. If you're not back in your down dog, head there. If you are in down dog, pedal out your feet just for a little bit of movement and then pause. Lift up onto the toes, let the heels descend a little bit more on your exhale. Ground down through all 10 fingers and just be in your down dog. Take a full breath in as you lift the right leg straight out behind you. Press through the heel. Exhale, bring the foot forward, plant it by your thumb. Taking that full breath in, rise right up into crescent. Pause and breathe. And then swivel the back foot down and open back up into warrior two. Take a full breath in, flip the hand, reach it up and then exhale into your side angle once again. We'll repeat these things so you get used to them. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. From your side angle, come on back into your warrior two. Knees tracking out closer to the pinky side of the foot. Stay strong through your legs. And then once again, flipping the hand, reach it up and then exhale, bring the hands down pause and breathe. You're doing great. From your plank, you lower down or you shift right back in to downward facing dog. Come back to your breath. Full inhale and a full exhale. Inhale the left leg straight out behind you, pushing through the heel. Exhale, bring the foot forward, plant it by your thumb. When you're ready, rise up into crescent. Lift up strong and tall, reaching through the fingertips, drawing the shoulders back, shining the heart forward. 
And then with your next breath, swivel the foot down, open up into warrior two. Keep drawing that knee over, open toward the pinky toe. And then flipping the hand, inhale, reach up, stretch high toward the ceiling. And then exhale the elbow right down onto the top of the thigh. Don't put a lot of weight in it though. It's just a guide. Stay open and breathe. Be patient. This too shall pass. With your next breath, come back to your warrior two. Stretch out. Flip the hand, inhaling, reach it up. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down to frame the foot. This time, bring the back foot forward so you're into a forward fold at the top of your mat. Take a full breath in for that halfway lift. Draw your shoulders back like you're squeezing an orange between your shoulder blades. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to stand, sweep up, stretch. Bring your hands right back to your heart space. So you're in mountain pose right now. You're standing tall at the top of your mat. Even if you weren't doing anything before and you were just watching and breathing, you can do this. So stand up. I'll do it too. Stand up. Take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. Open up your hands. Feel your shoulders come back. Pull into the low belly. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. We're going to come into tree. So put your weight into your left foot. Open up the right knee. And then bring the sole of the foot either to your shin or right up into your inner thigh. Keep pushing the standing leg into the sole of the foot of the bent leg and vice versa. You're hugging everything into your center line. Feel everything start to come up. You can grow your tree lifting up your arms, finding your balance, taking a full breath in and a full breath out. You can close your eyes during this. <clears throat> You could try to come up to your left toes. Chances are it's gonna throw your balance off and that's okay. Come back into it. Nobody's watching. You're in the privacy of your own home. You can do whatever you want. All I'm asking you to do is breathe with me. So take a full breath in and a full breath out. Bring your hands back to your heart space. Bring your feet to me. Pause and close your eyes. Feel the inhale move through your body, pause, and then feel the exhale leave your body. You'll ground through your feet, but find a lightness through the crown of your head. With your next breath, slowly start to open your eyes and let's find tree on the other side. So you're gonna put the weight into your left foot. Stay strong through that standing leg, open up the left knee, and then bring the sole of the foot in. Whether it's to your shin or your inner thigh, it doesn't make any difference. Just don't put it on your knee joint. You could also leave your toes right on the ground and just pivot that knee open and stay right there. Keep drawing everything into center and then you can grow your tree again if and when you want. If you're not a fan of having your arms up, take your hands behind your back, interlace the fingers, let the thumbs rest right on the sacrum so that the palms of your hands stay connected. You'll probably end up bending your elbows a little bit here, but you can still draw the shoulders back. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And then with your next breath, release your hands or bring them back to your heart space and let your feet meet. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. So, so back to the couch. Remember I was telling you I was sitting on the couch and not doing very much this last week. Um, I don't know about you, but sitting for any amount of time, my hips start to cry. So from this standing position that we're in, let's come into standing four, standing pigeon. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to lift the right knee up, crossing the ankle over the left knee, and then sit your hips back like you did in chair. You can hold on to your foot and your knee, but you'll feel this. Take your heart forward, shoulders stay back. And again, as you bend that left standing leg, like you're sitting in a chair, you'll start to feel the stretch right through the outside of your right hip. Now, you can go to the wall and hang on to the wall. You could go to the couch and hang on to the back of the couch because what you're doing is you're stretching out your hip. It's not necessarily, oh gosh, I'm gonna fall out of this and hurt myself. That's not the goal. The goal is to breathe into what's tight, what's stiff, bringing some renewing breath 
So if you're still in that pose, great. If you needed to move to a piece of furniture to give yourself better balance, awesome. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And then we'll find that pose on the other side. So back with both feet on the ground, take a full breath in, sweep the arms up, <clears throat> bring the hands right back to the heart space. And then keeping the weight in the right foot, inhale, bring the left knee up in front of you, cross the ankle over the right knee, start to bend that right leg so you can sit your hips back, find the stretch through the outside of the left hip. That's the beauty of being online, right? I can't see what you're doing, so that might make you happy, but I can't necessarily help you if I can't see you. So listen to your body really closely here through your inhales and your exhales. There should never be any pain when you're in a pose. You might be uncomfortable, there might be some discomfort. Well, we've got a lot of that happening right now, don't we? Let's breathe. Take a full inhale and a full exhale. If you've been holding onto the furniture for that pose or not, let's come back to standing. Both feet meet on the ground, take a full breath in, lifting up strong, and then exhale forward fold, hinge at the waist, let your fingertips come down to the earth. Inhale, halfway lift, stretch out from the tail through the crown of the head, exhale, forward fold. Keep your hands down, walk your feet back out to plank, and then here again, you rinse it off, or you move right back in to downward facing dog, your call. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Come back to your breath. And you can stay in down dog for the next few breaths or you could move your way back into child's pose. You don't necessarily need the props. You're looking to create a little bit of comfort this morning. So take a full breath in as your toes touch and you take your knees wide and you lay right down over your legs. Hips go back, hands go to the front. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. With your next breath, walk your hands back in, lift your hips, shift back into downward facing dog. Pedal out your feet. Notice where you've created some more space, some more flexibility. And then with one more big breath in, open your mouth, sigh it all out, and let's move just a little bit more. Inhale, lift up to your toes. Exhale, glide forward into plank. Pause in your plank, take a full breath in, shift the hips back up, downward facing dog. We're gonna build a little core heat now. So inhaling again, come back up to your toes. Exhale, glide forward into plank and pause. Lift the right toes, hovering that foot off the mat. And with breath, draw the right knee outside the right elbow. You're in plank. And then with your exhale, you're going to push your hips back and the foot back for three-legged dog. With your next inhale, glide back forward into plank. Bring the right knee outside the left elbow. Pause. Lift through the hips and the low belly. Exhale, the foot and the hips back up. Three-legged dog. Come back in again, gliding forward. Bring the right knee outside the right, the right elbow outside the right knee. Almost got me there. Pause and breathe. Now put the foot down right next to the right thumb. Take a strong breath in as you rise up for crescent. Lift up, frame the head again. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Swivel the back foot down, open up into warrior two. Right knee tracks toward the right pinky toe. Left toes point 90 degrees in the other direction. The whole sole of the left foot is on the ground and you're pressing on the outside of that left foot. Take a full breath in, open up the right hand. Big breath in as you sweep up and back. Straighten the right leg and then come back up and we're gonna come into triangle. So shift the left hip back, reach forward with the right fingertips, hinging at the waist, the side body. Let the right hand come down and the left hand go high. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And for those of you that know what you're doing, you can move yourself into half moon here Looking down at your right foot, feel that energy and that lift come up through the core. Push off that left foot and balance on that one foot, opening up, taking a full breath in. If you're staying in triangle, that's amazing because there you can hear your breath. So take another full inhale and a full exhale. 
If you're in half moon, come on back to triangle. Or if you're in triangle, come on back up into warrior two. Rebending that right knee. Take a full breath in, flip the right hand, everybody. Sweep it up, reach it back, and then we'll rinse it off. Cartwheel the hands down to frame the foot. Step the right foot back to meet the left. Pause in your plank, lower down or not. We'll all meet back in downward facing dog. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. We've got one more side. So take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale up to your toes. Glide forward into plank and pause. Stay high on your toes, heels lifted above them, strong through the arms and start to hover the left toes. Lift the foot right off the ground. And with breath, inhale, bring the left knee outside the left elbow. Stay strong through the core, exhaling high. Leg goes back, hips go high, three-legged down dog. Follow the breath forward, come back into plank. Bring the left knee outside the right elbow. Keep lifting, breathing, staying strong, and then exhale the foot and the hips back, three-legged down dog. One more time, inhale, glide forward into plank, bring the left knee, the left, yes, the left knee outside the left elbow. Did it again. Take a nice deep breath in and then plant the foot. Feet are in two separate lanes. Inhaling, rise high for crescent. Arms go up, maybe a little bit of a back bend. Staying open and staying connected to your breath. Anchor in. Take a full breath in, swivel the back foot down, open up into your warrior two. Flip the left hand, sweep it up, reach back. Exhaling, come on into side angle. Pause and breathe. Yes, the side is a little different. Sometimes that happens. Take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. Come back to your warrior two. Straighten the left leg. Shift the hip back, reaching forward with the left fingertips and then hinging at the waist at your side body. Let the left hand come down and the right hand go up. Stretch out, being sure that you can still breathe nice and deeply. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And again, if you wanna work your way into half moon, you breathe in and up using your core, pushing off the right foot, balancing on that left foot, arms open, or just stay in your triangle. The goal is to breathe and to be patient. Take another full breath in and a full breath out. And then from here, we're gonna work our way back into warrior two. So if you're in half moon, you gently set the right foot down behind you, rebend the left knee, and we'll all come back into warrior two, flipping the left hand, inhaling, sweep it up, reach back, Exhale, cartwheel the hands down, frame the foot, step it back, rinse this off, it's your last flow. So whether you choose to lower all the way down and do your cobra or up dog, or just skip it and go right back to down dog, follow the breath, anchor in. Take a full inhale and a slow exhale. When you get back into your downward facing dog, take another breath in and another breath out, and then gently bring your knees down. We're gonna come back to our seats, crossing your legs, Sukhasana, easy pose. So take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. Let's just do a touch of core, and then we're gonna move into restorative. We're gonna see how this goes. Um, I really, really think that the restorative piece is just as important as the heavy breathing and the sweating that we do when we work out. We just don't know it. So stay with me and we'll see how it goes. In the meantime, for a little bit of core, bring your knees out, plant your feet. <clears throat> you can stay right here, but keep lifting through the chest, draw the shoulders back, or start to balance on your sit bones and bring your feet up. I need a pedicure, don't look. Take a nice deep breath in and a deep breath out. Hands can be by your sides. They can stay underneath your thighs. You can lift them up. You know where you need to go with this. It can be really tough. It can be, okay, breathe. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Okay, I'll do it with you. One more breath in, one more breath out. Keep breathing. Full breath in, full breath out. Stay with me. And then inhale, lower down. Bring it back up. Only three of these, one more lower down. Bring it back up, last one, lower down. Bring it back up. Plant your feet, 
Take your hands and turn your fingers toward your bottoms. With a nice deep breath, lift your hips up. Let your head relax. Keep drawing your arm bones in nice and strong. Take a full breath in. Let your hips come back down. See, that wasn't too bad at all, was it? All right, I want to talk about restorative. Near and dear to my heart. I can't believe that at soon to be 55 years old, I've actually discovered what it is to slow down. And for those of you that know me, you know that that's really hard for me. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Stack your shoulders over your hips and just pause. Feel the breath move through your body. So we're gonna set up in two restorative poses. I hope that you have pillows or blankets. If not, run and get them right now. And the first thing that we're gonna do is a heart opener. So you're gonna take <clears throat> your blankets Not even a blanket. Take your bath towel. In your bath towel, you're just going to fold it in half, lay it on the ground, and start to roll it up. You're going to make a nice long roll. You're going to take a second bath towel, <clears throat> fold it in half, lay it down, take the roll you just made, put it in, roll it up again. So you're just making this nice fat roll. Keep the wrinkles out of it. Keep sliding your hands down it. One more. Take your bath towel, fold it in half. Lay it down. Take the two rolls, put it on top. Roll it up. Okay, you have this beautiful, nice round bolster. You're gonna take this bolster, lay it on your mat, you're going to take your shoulder blades and lay right across the top of it. Your shoulders are going to let go. Your arms are going to be open, palms up. You can keep your knees bent, knocked in with the feet as wide as the mat. You can also bend your elbows and put your hands at like goal post shape. And you're gonna take a full breath in and a full breath out. Your backs may crack as you start to get into that pose because we're so used to being hunched over. We never give ourselves an opportunity to open up. So as you're staying right there and those blankets are basically where a, a bra strap would be. It's at the tip of your shoulder blades. Allow yourself to open, the shoulders go back. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. So here you can start to close your eyes and again, allow gravity to do its thing. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. We're not gonna stay here very long. I am gonna remind you to breathe. Normally when you're in a restorative pose, there's no talking. The whole objective is to settle your nervous system, to activate that parasympathetic nervous system so you can just let go. another full breath in and a full breath out.
Take a full breath in and a full breath out. So from this restorative heart opener, to come out of this pose, I want you to start to walk your feet in and you wiggle yourself back. And then you roll over to your right side and you pause. <clears throat> Use your hands to push yourself up to a seat. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. The restorative poses are designed to give you an opportunity to find some peace and some stillness. It's really helpful to do it where there's no distractions. Um, you're creating your own refuge and we all kind of need that right now. So the one pose that I would really encourage you to do, which anybody can do, any age, any situation is it's called Stonehenge and you're basically bending your knees up and over something so the best way to do that is either on the floor with your legs over a couch or a chair and I brought a little chair and you could use any chair I don't want your knees your heels up too high so this is what we're doing You can move to the couch or a chair and you take one of those bath towels that you just had just to give yourself a little cushion again nice and smooth and you can lay that down where you're gonna sit and you're just gonna bend your legs right up over the chair so this chair is a little high for me so I'm gonna take some pillows for underneath my low back to prop my hips up a little bit more. And then once your legs get up there, you can lay back and again, open up your arms. And then if you can reach your other bath towel, you're going to take that. only because it's nice to be warm and cozy when you're doing these poses. And you're just going to throw that up over your legs, cover yourself up. And I think one of the last things I mentioned that you should grab is a washcloth. And what I want you to do with the washcloth is just gently place it over your eyes. Nice and simple, just grab a washcloth, fold it in half or in thirds. And you're just gonna lay it over your eyes, nice and gentle, no pressure. Once you're lying down and you have your legs up and your washcloth over your eyes, gently start to tuck your chin just a little bit so that that bony part on the back of your head is flatter on the ground. As you tip your chin down, that will help get you into the parasympathetic nervous system where you, your body will let go. Shavasana is an amazing place. It's healing from the inside out and it's just some place that you can take yourself to whenever things are getting to be a little bit much. And if things aren't a little bit much for us right now, God only knows what's coming. Might as well start practicing this now. It's healing from the inside out. It's so good for your central nervous system. Our bodies need a break. And in turn, this gives our minds a break. So don't overthink it. Anchor back in. Take a full inhale. And a full exhale. I'm going to come back and chat every once in a while. I hope that you've stayed with me and I hope that you're in Shavasana and or Stonehenge at this point. Take a full breath in 
and a full breath out. And again, if you're just joining us, just head to Shavasana. You can go back and rewatch this later. Go through the physical movement of the flow part. But this restorative piece, I want you to be as comfortable as you can, as still as you can. Let these few moments of quiet bring you some peace, some release. And if you don't want to lay down and do traditional Shavasana, lean against the wall or sit in your favorite chair. Just close your eyes. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. You're doing great. You're breathing. And you're intentionally creating a space where you can allow the stillness to fill you up. And if and when your mind takes you other places, that's okay. <clears throat> Be patient with yourself and come back to that really full inhale and that lovely long exhale. Take another full breath in and a full breath out. Remember you're good right where you are. Nothing needs to happen except your breath. Slow down. Cultivate some patience, some kindness. A little self-compassion goes a long way. We're gonna take one more full breath in and one more full breath out. I'm gonna be quiet for a whole two minutes. Yes, it's possible. And then I'll bring you out.
Start to deepen your breath. Taking a fuller inhale and a longer exhale. <clears throat> and then bring a little movement into your fingers and your toes. Take another full breath in and a full breath out. Draw your knees into your chest and gently roll to your right side and just pause curled up on your right side for just another few breaths. And then when you're ready, you can use your hands to push yourself back up to a seated position. Legs crossed, shoulders stacked over hips. Taking a full breath in and a full breath out. And together, let's sweep the arms up, reaching high, inhaling up. And then exhaling, bringing your hands right to your heart space, resting those thumbs right on your chest. Feeling your own heartbeat, knowing you're good right where you are. And you can always come back to your inhale and your exhale. The light and truth in me sees that in each of you, even though I can't see you, I know you're there, I know you're watching. Keep breathing and remember the quiet and the stillness. It's not a bad thing right now. Embrace it. Let it do some healing from the inside out. Together we say namaste, which means I'm good, you're good, we're good together. I'll see you next Tuesday at nine o'clock, but obviously everybody else from Balance is keeping their schedule and doing their thing. I hope you sign in and join in whenever you can. And if you can pick up a virtual class pass for eight dollars, go to the Mind Body site and do that. And then hopefully uh, we'll get it all through this together. Thanks for being here this morning, everybody. Go get some coffee. Have a great day.